Hi, I'm Tarish and I'm a recently graduated design student from Bangalore, India. And something really interesting has been on my radar for the last couple of months. So I'm really excited to be here and share it with all of you. So let's begin. So this all started five months ago when a friend came up to me and said, hey, I have something for you and handed me this. So it was a postcard with the most peculiar font. And she said, I know you do something with fonts. And I thought this font is really cool. So I got this for you. And I actually didn't know what I felt or what to say. Because while I had seen this style of font, this fake Devanagari Indian style, I never had it come up to me and then was forced to think about it or react to it. So after that, I wondered, what is this font? And how do I feel about it? And how do I feel about this whole fake Devanagari Indian style anyway? And that's when I entered this rabbit hole of a most Indian type, where I'm basically exploring four Indian letters and what they mean to me and what I think of them. Now, postscript is letters that read in one script but usually look like another script. So an example of that is for Arabic Latin, which reads in Latin, but it usually looks like an Arabic Nask or Nastalik, or maybe even a Kufic. Some um, examples of that are maybe in this movie poster on the left, where a faux Arabic script has been used to provide an Urdu context, or on the right, a book lettering where faux Arabic has been used to provide some sort of an exotic Middle Eastern context. There is also faux Chinese Latin, which is Latin again, that seems to look like Chinese. Now, in my city, this is quite common, and it's quite commonly seen as restaurant signages that provide their Chinese food context to passers-by, who may be then persuaded to eat there. So this seems to have a specific purpose, the postscripts. Uh, they seem to be used by designers to provide cultural context or regional context just at a glance. So today I'm going to talk um, mostly about the four Devanagari script. And the Devanagari script is an Indic script that is used to write over 120 languages. And it looks like what you see on the left. So how do four Devanagari fonts look? Now, I did do some digging and there are quite a few four Devanagari fonts out there. Some of them being Linotype Sansara, uh, Devanagrish, Ananda Namaste, Modakshar Bt, and actually an extremely interesting example, which is from the Metal Type era. So I found this in a specimen book and it's called Hare Ram Hare Krishna. So they have been doing this for a while the whole four script thing. But one four Devanagari font I found reigns supreme, and that is the Samarkand font by Titivalis Foundry. The font looks like this, and if you were in India, and maybe if you were abroad as well, you would have seen this font somewhere. And I certainly saw it and really noticed it when I got this postcard. And first I scoffed. When I saw the postcard, when I read about the font, when I started seeing the font everywhere, I said, that's a silly imitation font. And this doesn't respect either script. It doesn't respect Latin, which it is being set in. And it doesn't respect Devanagari, which is, which is trying to copy. And my primary reason for that was that I thought that, and I still think that Samarkand copies or repurposes a lot of Devanagari characters to form Latin characters. For example, the S of Samarkand is like the Devanagari E or the Latin O of Samarkand is kind of like a wonky Devanagari Tha or maybe the M of Samarkand is like a strange Devanagari La or the L of Samarkand is kind of like an O Matra in Devanagari. 
and this may be intentional or unintentional, but that's how it seems to me. And I might have to do a double take if I saw these in isolation. But no matter what I say about the font, uh, it is in demand. That's that's undoubtable. So for example, you see it in logos, and this is a South Asian Digital Content Creation Award, or an Amazon initiative to celebrate women entrepreneurs, or a cooperative handloom society that is based in Odisha, which is a state in Eastern India, or maybe a Punjabi restaurant whose food is actually quite nice. I've seen it in packaging, this is packaging of some exotic Indian incense bricks. I've seen it in newspaper advertisements. This is an advertisement from SBI, which is the State Bank of India, which is a pan-national bank. It's of course there abroad uh, to portray that Indian context. So you can see that in Indian restaurants abroad, or you can of course see it in a yoga center. I've seen this in Instagram posts as well. I've also seen it in, most recently, the Japan Olympics, uh, as shown on the right. <clears throat> and this was there in the hockey team jerseys for the men and the women. And also historically in the Commonwealth Games on the left. And you can also see Samarkand in tattoos, where someone likes the style and the font so much that they want to permanently brand it into their arms which is quite something. So basically the font is everywhere and it's used in many, many different contexts. Now people seem to really like this font because they are willing to use it in so many different contexts and they even want to tattoo it on their own arms. So in terms of usability use case, this font definitely works. But why? Now I think the Devanagari script is very recognizable in India and Samarkand copies the script quite well. So here's why I think so. Now it copies the top line or the Shiro Rekha of Devanagari that runs over every character. It also imitates the calligraphic axis of Devanagari that you can see best in the cuts of the vertical bars at the bottom. It also emulates the vertical stems of Devanagari. So even the characters in Samarkand that do not have a vertical bar, they are given one to connect them to the top line. So it mimics the Devanagari script and people get the pun. People get the visual pun that Samarkand is making. So I think for this reason, they also enjoy it. So I softened my dislike for the font, but I don't think we have to settle for it. I believe the effect that Samarkand executes can be done better. For example, take the font Jaipur by Vic Figa. Now the letters have not been directly repurposed from Devanagari. They still look like Latin. And it is also different from other four Devanagari fonts. In fact, I also spoke with Vic on email and he told me that he wanted to make something different from other four Devanagari fonts. Or take this another exquisite Latin sample where there are some highly legible Latin letters but they have that Devanagari calligraphic cut at the bottom. And the top line merges so well with the natural forms of most of the letters. And it only exists forcefully in maybe the B and the H. And the designer has also incorporated diacritics into the entire lettering. Or take this example, where I think the word mark formed at the end has been really strong because of that top line also imparting that Devanagari feel to it. And this book really stands out on a bookshelf. Or take this font. But it has the Devanagari calligraphic axis and the cut. And it has such a subtle top line, which also doubles as a sort of Latin serif. So it doesn't look odd in any manner. 
and the entire effect has been executed very tastefully or similarly for this where there is a lot of subtlety in the letters themselves and it does not harshly show the effect of the top line and thus the effect of the devnagari so people like the four style and it can be done tastefully so why dismiss it but what i really think is problematic or what really irritates me is for devnagari used where the context is not appropriate now i don't even need to say that india is diverse that's kind of an axiom but india is not just devnagari now we have roughly 200 languages of which 22 are official and around 25 scripts of which 14 are major according to a government estimate and here's how some of our major scripts look and you can see they all look so different from each other and you have devnagari in the midst of them all also looking very different from the rest so they share very very few similarities so when you have this local handloom society of odisha which has its own local odia script looking very different from devnagari there's a huge disconnect when the logo itself has a for devnagari script or when you have this tamil cafe in paris you know next to the the for devnagri facade you have the tamil script looking very different there is again that disconnect or it's also very strange to see india represented abroad using this for devnagri so at an international stage when the whole world is watching you have for devnagri representing all of india scripts or when you have isro which is the indian space research organization representing india at that interstellar level and in their logo they have that hint of devnagri because of the top line there is still a disconnect and i don't think this is just a lazy shortcut but it's also insidious because it implies the presence of an all representing all purpose indian script which leans towards devnagri so i wanted to ask this question of myself and of others how could we celebrate the various individual scripts that we have now there seems to be a scope to create four fonts in latin that imitate other indian scripts so i posed this question and this sort of challenge to other designers and we explored very briefly over the span of maybe a week uh how other four indic scripts could look so someone came up with the four bangla assamese some up, someone came up with the four gujarati someone came up with a four devnagari but in the style of jain manuscript calligraphy another four bangla assamese another four devnagari specifically again in jain calligraphy style and i myself took a crack at a kind of four kannada and how that might look now the thing is that this was not an easy task so at the end of it my respect for samarkan actually grew a bit so another interesting take is from indian type designer and typographer shiva nanda perwal and it is a south indian latin which is basically inspired from scripts in south india that have the common element of a loop so this imparts a very intriguing texture to the final piece i feel and i think it really works as a very subtle and intriguing take on the subject so another question that i wanted to ask myself was can we represent india through type or is it possible to represent india using type
without falling back on that Devnagri bias. And I don't know, but I think maybe this SBI ad that is currently only appealing to the sensibilities of Devnagri readers could have been done something like this, in which four fonts have not been used here. But this ad is celebrating and embracing the diversity of scripts that we have. In short, I want to say that I think four Devnagri works in context, but the effect can be achieved more tastefully than its popular usage. Using four Devnagri in context of other Indian scripts is ignorant and wrong. And using four Devnagri to represent India, you know, as like a blanket statement is just blatantly incorrect. And Samarkand is not the worst font ever, but it shouldn't be the end all of four Indian scripts. Before I wrap up, I want to show you all some more letters. And I found these very interesting because the intersection between the scripts is quite unique and beautiful. I want to acknowledge Erin McLaughlin's Flickr albums as I have taken a few images from there. So this one is a Chinese context for Devnagri readers and the Devnagri has been set in a traditional Chinese writing method of top to bottom. There is an Urdu context for Devnagri readers. There is an Urdu context again for Devnagri readers. There is a Bangla context for Devnagri readers. Or an Old English context for Devnagri readers. Here's a Latin-like serif style and a Western context for Gujarati readers. And some Devnagri-like letters for Bangla Assamese readers. Or in Urdu context again for Devnagri readers. And the lettering being set to the right almost gives it that effect of Urdu being written from right to left as well. A black, black letter like style for Devnagri readers. And this is quite a famous logo in India. The same logo, a black letter like style for Gujarati readers. And a Latin like serif style for Kannada readers. So that's it. And here are some links that I read and reread while you know, reading up on this and forming my perspective. And these are my views so far in the last three months. So I would love to know what yours are. Have you thought about this? Do you have a different opinion? Please let me know. And you can always hit me up at, on any of these IDs. I will definitely respond uh, because I'm always down to talk type. <laughs> and I would like to extend a huge thank you to my friends, families, colleagues for their um, conversation, their resources, their feedback, support, everything. And type weekend for letting this talk happen. And that one postcard for actually making this talk happen. So yeah, thank you.